And we are at Harvard University Innovation Lab, one of the newer buildings at this famous institution designed to help its students collaborate and potentially come up with breakthrough ideas. Now, just this week, it held its President's Innovation Challenge. More than 200 student teams applied with their best ideas to solve social issues within the fields of health and life sciences. Winners focusing on problems as varied as HIV to personal bankruptcy took home up to $75,000 in prize money. Now, earlier, we sat down with Harvard President Drew Faust to discuss how this place fosters innovation. I think we have such a vibrant innovation community in so many dimensions here and it's exciting to see it growing, it's exciting to see the output and I think that having Mark Zuckerberg come back is going to be a great moment for everyone to celebrate him and to remind ourselves of the many ways in which we have been innovators and will continue to be innovators. Looking at one of the ways you're innovators is iLab. I mean, the very fact that you have accelerators here, ways in which you can help foster growing businesses and then set them out into the great world. How long has that been in play and how has it helped build new companies coming out of Harvard? Well, the iLab was founded in 2011 with the notion that providing people a space and some support in terms of experts in things like venture funding and building companies and bringing ideas into to the commercial world, that with that kind of help we could uh, enable students and faculty to really follow their ideas and their dreams and make them tangible realities in the world. So it's turned out to be a success beyond even our fondest dreams as people have um, flocked to it. And we now have more than 75 companies that have come out of the iLab. And we have every year something called the President's Challenge, which mm -hmm. I sponsor. And students and groups of students compete for and some funding to move their idea to the next phase. And and that's always really exciting to see the things that they've dreamed up and then to be able to pick some winners. You yourself are a historian by trade, if we use that turn of phrase. How do you feel the multidisciplinary focus of Harvard helps to foster this varied group of technology companies? Well, when I think about history and innovation, I do think they're very closely linked because I believe that understanding th that things have been different enables you to think that they can be different again. And if you just accept the status quo and don't understand what has led to the different paths that got you to the status quo, I think you're inhibited in your ability to figure out what paths might take our society and, and people within it in new directions in the future. So my sense, not just of history, which is my own field, obviously, but more generally, I think liberal arts and, and broad gauged education stimulate ideas. They challenge people to get out of their comfortable zones and to say, oh, if I just shift this perspective, what can I do differently? And we see this in the eye that many, many of the teams that come together draw on individuals from different schools, someone from the law school together with someone from the Kennedy school together with someone from the business school. They can think together about policy questions, regulation questions, organization questions, but maybe the product they're thinking about is a scientific project. So then someone from one of our science schools or departments will be part of that team. And so I believe that this wide-ranging approach enables people to think more um, ambitiously. We're almost talking about diversity here, aren't yes. we? Diversity yes. of discipline. What about diversity of ethnic origin and of course we both sat here as females, women and particularly in engineering and coming into the eye labs because this is something that particularly the tech giants struggling with is how to get enough women and diversity into their doors. Is this something that you think coming through the ranks is STEM becoming more applicable across all sorts of parts of the world? We've seen a great growth in interest in STEM education here at Harvard over the last decade or so. Um, we established our School of Engineering as a school in its own right in 2007. And since that time, we've had a tripling in the number of students who want to concentrate major in that area, but a quadrupling in the number of women who have gone into to engineering. Uh, and 
that they make up about 35 percent of our engineering concentrators now we think they should make up half and we will keep striving for that but I do think that this diversity relates to what you spoke about earlier which is we've tried to say that engineering is a liberal arts field whatever you think you might be interested in engineering could have a place in that and in fact if you're going to be a citizen of the 21st century you need to understand technology so we've tried to cast a very broad and open gate and I feel that often in the past science studies challenge people by saying kind of if you're not going to be Einstein you don't belong here and we're going to flunk everybody out and, and we're going to make it really impossible for you to succeed. We have a completely opposite attitude which is come try this out. We want to give you a path to succeeding in this because we think it's so important. So I think that has helped us a lot in diversifying the students who are interested in the field and participate in the field and this extends beyond gender. It, I think it includes ethnicity as well. What about therefore pearls of wisdom that perhaps you've learned over the course of building up that diversity that you can give to business leaders that perhaps are still struggling and, and looking for ways in which to make sure their pool can be more diverse too? Well, I think rather than my giving pearls of wisdom, I think that we can learn a lot from each other. I think partnerships as we um, seek to understand uh, how to nurture the kinds of attitudes and the kinds of career choices and pathways that make these attractive to students. So I think it's partly how we educate people and how we help them to understand what a career in science or technology can mean, but also how career opportunities are shaped, how uh, companies recruit, how they support individuals. So I would hope that we could have a lot of back and forth and collaboration about, about those shared commitments to, to diversifying the workforce.